brings anointing. If you had a relationship with the Lord, <laughs> nobody will tell you to pray. You will pray. <laughs> and the prayer now, nobody will be telling you when to pray. You will pray when you are led to pray. You will pray even when you are not led to pray. You will pray because you are in a relationship. Fasting, you will fast. Reading the word, you will read the, you will study the word. Listening to messages, you will do. Giving arms, you will give. If you are in a relationship with God, what the scripture says, you will be doing it. And you will not be doing it in a methodical way. You will be doing it in a relationship way. Praise the Lord. And I also pointed out, anointing is not for personal gain, it is for others. So we said that last, I won't stress on it again. We also said anointing always re reveals Christ. What the anointing does is to reveal Jesus. Wherever miracles were done in the scriptures, it reveals the Lord. It reveals the master. So anointing is meant to reveal Jesus. How do you know when the anointing is not there? Tell me where is Jesus in this whole thing. And you, somebody contacted me today. He said, man of God, you prayed for me one time during your ministration, and I got healed. He, he, he wouldn't wait for me to correct him. He said, Christ healed me. I said, that's correct now. So many a times, we, a lot of things we do, there's no Jesus there. That's why we say the anointing and the gift of the Holy Spirit because the gifts are irrevocable. The gifts are irreversible. I know some preachers, they say devil has no power. You've heard some people that say no, devil has no power, right? That's a lie. For you to say devil has no power, you say Jesus is lying. Because Jesus said, I've given you authority over all the power of who? The devil, the wicked one. They have power. The only thing is, it is corrupted. It is illegal. They are not authorized to use it the way they are using it. So the devil has power. So when the devil or the demons were pushed away from their position, all the powers they had, they still have it. The only thing is, they don't have authority. They don't have right. And so they are operating without God's permission. Amen? So anointing reveals Jesus. There are meetings you will go, you will, you, even if you are not healed, you will know that Jesus is in this place. Because the anointing will open the revelation of Jesus to you. We open the revelation of the word of God to you. We open the revelation of the truth of God's word. Because the anointing is in oppression. In 1 John chapter 2 verse, um, verse 27, he said, the anointing is in you and it will teach you all what? All truth. So the moment there is an anointing and there is word spoken, what the anointing will do, the anointing will begin to open you up. So if there is a, a, an anointing from the Lord, as I begin to speak to you, even without a prophet talking to you, somebody, some voice, some inspiration will, will speak to you. You will begin to get understanding. You will begin to get revelation of the word of God. You will begin to remember some things you have forgotten. It is the anointing that is in operation. Sometimes you begin to feel the warm comfort of God. A preacher was preaching one time. And then a man who is drunk walked into the church. Do you know what he said? He said, oh dear, this place is so comfortable. I've never felt such comfort here. So he sat down. And so he began to tell them, wow, this, this place is comfortable. It's, it's calm. The preacher said, though the drunk man didn't know, he was sensitive enough to feel the palpable presence of the comforter. So it's no noise, it's no jagger, jagger, jagger. You know, a lot of noise. This generation is full with noise, trying to prove points, trying to bring down somebody, trying to attack somebody. No. 
The truth of God's word is simple. So the anointing brings about Jesus, reveals Jesus, shows Jesus, magnifies Jesus. I've read books, I've read documents, I've listened to documents of men who walk with anointing. You will always see Jesus around them. On the other hand, gift is something else. Huh? So now, we looked at the anointing last week, but we didn't look at the second part, which is the gift of the Spirit. And I want to add this too. Every believer is anointed. Every believer is anointed. Every believer. So, no matter the day you become a believer, even if it's one day old believer, you are anointed. So, how does it work? Your anointing finds expression as you gain knowledge. Yeah. Lord, Lord, anoint me. Oh, Lord, put oil on me. Irrelevant prayers. And the anointing grows as you gain knowledge. And as you are growing and being faithful to God, you will find greater expression of the anointing. There are some things that God will not do with a day old believer because pride will destroy him. Let's say almost those day old believers who ventured into places of raising the dead and doing all manner of things. They say, Nobody can talk to me. Have you raised the dead? For you know they go away. So God will not allow such to happen. But it can happen when that believer presses forward with faith. So a day old believer has anointing. As he begins to nurture his relationship with God, the anointing will begin to find greater expression. Now, on the other hand, we have the gift of the Spirit. We have the gift of the Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes on a believer during baptism of the Holy Spirit, he equips the believer to be an instrument that can express his gift. Amen. In the new covenant, you cannot express any gift of the Holy Spirit except you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. You can pray and your prayer will be answered. That means you can pray for the sick, they will be healed by faith. You can pray for direction, and God will give you direction either by inner intuition or by dreams or any ways, but it will come by faith. It will not be a gift by faith. Now, when we talk about the gift of the Holy Spirit, which starts with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, these gifts are meant to announce, are meant to propagate are meant to edify the body. To the body of Christ, it is meant to edify the entire body. To the outsiders, it is meant to entice them to come to Christ. So the reason why you are prophesying is you prophesy, the person says, say, say, until you come to Jesus, that's when you will receive something like this. Then the person will have motivation to come. It is not a gift for amassing wealth. No. It, and you know the you know the you know the you know the terrible thing, when the Holy Spirit gives you the gift and ability, He can't take it back. He cannot. Even a man who has backslidden in in club dancing with naked people, if he had the gift of healing, of that gift to work. Many Christians don't know this. 
And so it becomes a matter of issue where a preacher is backslidden with he has left Christ, but he is still performing wonders. And I say, How is that possible? Is the gift. Now, when you talk about the gift, the gift, a, a gift is not aimed. You don't earn any, you don't you don't work to get a gift. A gift is willfully, freely given to you. The only thing you need to do with gift is to receive it. And is to receive it by faith. I see some people going and they fast. They say they sit down and they fast for days so that they can qualify to earn the gift. They don't get it. Most of the times they don't get anything. If you want to get a gift, ask by faith. He said, ask and you shall receive. Seek, you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened. Ask, you didn't get it the first time, keep asking. By faith. Not the one you ask, you will not excite. Ask and try and excite it. Oh Lord, give me the gift of prophecy. Give me the gift of word of knowledge. But you have never come out and say, Lord, tell me something about that person that will edify him. When you begin to ask that question, the spirit will tell you, go and tell him that it is well. That he saw you last night. You saw you. The moment you go and say, it is well, the person say, how did you know? It will flow. That's how it operates. There are people say, oh, apostle doesn't know what is prophetic. He doesn't know what is word of knowledge. How did I get where I am without knowing those things? That's what some people say. Say, you don't understand how this prophetic gift is working in us. Meanwhile, I have people, lots of people, who are evidence of the prophetic gifts that have worked in my life. The moment you open your mouth to express that gift, it is faith. The moment you open your mouth, the thing will start flowing. You come to a meeting and say, Ben, Ben, what's Ben? Somebody raise up, me and Ben. Next thing you see a figure, 30. Say, Ben, I'm seeing 30. Are you 30? You say, yes. Now, it is good to exercise those gifts without camera. A lot of people disgracing the church. Yes, you can exercise those gifts without camera. Shut down the camera and start exercising them. Learn them with your friends. Wake up in the morning and you, you intentionally send the text message that your friend will send and say, I know, no, God, na, God, I talk to you. So you express those gifts. The, the, the thing will come and it will keep flowing. There was a day we were in the hotel room with some ministers and they were just, you know, speaking in tongues. They put some tongues on their phone and they just be speaking. I don't have any problem with that. But be real Christians before speak tongues. So I came out to the hotel room. When I began to prophesy, they thought I was joking. I say, are you? Look, 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 you. Look, 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 you. And everybody there, except some two people that didn't get any prophetic one, and they thought I was the one doing it. I don't like them. You see, if it's some people that they will not add their own and give those two people so that it will be complete. So you receive these gifts by what? By faith. I remember when Benihin came to, came to Nigeria. So we went... Oh, I've seen the healing. I've seen what I'm looking for. He prayed. People fall under power. I fell because they fell on me. Everybody was falling. If you don't fall, you will wound there. So I have to fall so that I will not injure myself. I got up and said, I've got to need. No extra fasting needed. No extra meditation to activate anything. Nothing. The next day, I'm going to look for the sick. And I went to my local church. And I got a woman that is working on clutches. I said, I get up and walk. She's not working. Collect her clutches. The woman walked a few steps and stopped. And the next day, she is back with her clutches. I said, oh, she doesn't want to get well. I move forward with my healing. I, don't. <laughs> I move forward. You can't come and tie me down with unbelief. I will move. And I kept moving. I've gotten it. And I'm going to prove it. I kept doing it. I kept doing it until it is working. That's faith. Faith means substance of what you hope for. Evidence. You already have it. Many people don't understand. That's how the gift of the Spirit works. 
So you receive these gifts by faith. The moment you pray and ask, you have received it. That's the same thing with the Holy Ghost baptism. You know the difficulty of many people receiving Holy Ghost baptism? They're waiting for the Holy Spirit to open their heart like and speak it for them. That's what they're waiting for. They're waiting for the Holy Spirit to force them. You know, throw them on the ground like demons and then force them. No, uh -uh. no, Holy Spirit doesn't do like that. In fact, the book of the Acts said they were sitting down when the Holy Spirit came. They were not standing. And they began to speak. They began to speak means they were the ones speaking. Eh? But the utterance was coming from the Holy Spirit. It's just like now that I can speak Hebo. I am the one speaking it, but the utterance is coming from my mind. So the Holy Spirit has given them the ability. It is now they're opening their mouth, the thing is coming out. That's the same way all the gifts are. He gives you the gift, you are the one to take action. You have received gift of discernment. Why not ask the Holy Spirit each time you meet people? Which you this one? Why not ask the Holy Spirit what spirit is functioning here? Why not say, which, where is angel in this hall now? Not that one people normally do emotional. And see five angels. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. No. I'm talking about the spirit, the gift of the spirit. And this gift is your own. Oh, my God. This is why people always say, wait till they talk. When the Holy Spirit gives you a gift, it is, belongs to you. Peter said, what I have, I do what? I give to you. So the gift of the Holy Spirit, once given to you, becomes what? Your own. The only thing is that God will judge you how you used it. Eh? It's just like a child that you bought an iPad. That child is now his own. You use the iPad. But if you use the iPad in a way that is not good, you will not be pleased. Uh, so you judge that child by using some rod on him. Amen. So I've emphasized that gifts are not wages. They cannot be earned. They can only be received. I remember the day I received the gift of the signing of spirit. When a prayer meeting, just small prayer meeting, and our mentor, our disciple, was just praying, and then he said, he said, you, you have received the gift of the sign of spirit. I said, that's it, that's all. You began to, you began to design it. I can design, in fact, it was so sharp at the initial point, before I began to slow down and then pick up again. It was so sharp that I will see that I will, I will the, the Holy Spirit will tell me, you will use animals to tell me. I will just see someone say, that was a snake. <laughs> what snake? Crafty, cunning, can be dangerous. And somebody will say, where did you get it? Yeah, Jesus called the rod first. <laughs> somebody will say, where did you get that one from? Jesus said, the rod is a fox. Go and tell that fox. So the Holy Spirit began to tell me, I'll meet somebody who's a gluten. You use, the, you use a connotation to tell me. And I began to. So I can sit back. I'll just say, no, this person cannot be trusted, though. This person cannot be trusted. This person cannot be trusted. I just knew it. It's just a knowing. Just come. You know it, the way you know your name. Then we progressively moved from there, gift of healing, gift of the miraculous, gift of the word of knowledge. And the, 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 the word of knowledge for people who are in healing, because today is healing anointing we're talking about. For word of knowledge, the primary of it is if you're in a place where somebody has eye problem, <laughs> your eye will be showing that sign for you. So I will go to a place and um, one of my eyes will start my functioning. Uh -uh. I know I don't have eye problem. Until I learned that somebody has eye problem and I began to pick it, then I now knew without having those signs. So I can now pick it if I'm preaching. I can now say somebody has eye problem without my eye giving me issue. Right, there was one time I was in a peace house discipleship. My, my re left eye, I didn't even understand what was happening to it. It was only enough, enough that their leader, their unit leader, 
went for eye surgery on the left eye, and then let's be praying. Hey, I said we should pray. I be let's declare healing there. That was when I knew. So those things can develop with time. They are gifts, and they operate by faith. So the primary thing I want us to understand about gifts is it is not hard to use them. It is not hard. Until you have anointing, your gift will control you. If you don't have anointing, the gift will be controlling you. The gift will blow you out of proportion. The gift will make you proud, make you self-asserted, make you, you cannot cooperate with anybody because you think you are sufficient. But when you are under the anointing, you will be able to work with other people. Yes, that's what anointing does. Anointing recognizes other people. But if you work only on gifting, you just all you, all you. And then we have ministries and ministers that are gift-centered, not word-centered. Because word-centered, you will need anointing. To declare the counsel of God through scripture, you need anointing. Because it is when you are declaring the word that people will be seeing Jesus. But if you are gift-centered, you cannot declare the word. You don't have anointing to declare the word. That's why I see some churches, all oh, they just go, they do, they dance, they dance, they dance, they dance, 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 dance. They now get to a point in the dancing. You know, the, the minister will come out and then he starts saying, you are wearing blue pants, you are wearing that, you are wearing that. I saw you eating alele yesterday. And everybody will be clapping. Ah! No Jesus there. Nobody is glorifying Jesus. Nobody is talking about Jesus. All they are talking is about the gift. And I strongly believe this is not the season where we are looking at the gift. This is a season where we are looking for anointing. And I will tell you this, very true. Most people who have anointing, they don't have large crowd. I sit down to look at it. The other day I was following that man. There is one man that went to a school of deaf and dumb and everybody got healed. He healed all of them. I was following his meeting online. People that is in his, this thing, they were not up to 100. They were not even up to 50. So, eh? With all the power, with all the anointing on this man. Because he doesn't see, there is no caricature, all those things they do. All those gimmicks things they add there. All those humanity things they add just to make everything look so that they can burn time. That's why some churches you go to, the whole thing is to just burn time so that the man of God can come and express his gift. So giftings can operate, can operate without any uh, anointing, without any relationship with God. For instance, Balaam. Balaam was a sorcerer who had the ability to also prophesy. Samson was a man whose lifestyle was immoral, yet he has the ability to have strength, the gift of strength. So you see, in such cases, Saul was left by the Spirit of God, but he remained the king. So the gift of the Spirit remains... But the anointing may lift the anointing. And so we have different gifts, tongues and interpretation, prophecy, the signing of spirit, healing, miracles, gift of faith. All these gifts are there and are available for every believer. In fact, every believer can express all the gifts of the Spirit. Do you know why? Do you know how? When you have the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the anointing, you can express all the gifts of the Spirit. Do you, do you know? Why? Because when the Lord needs you to prophesy, even if you don't have that gift to prophesy, you will prophesy. When he needs you to heal, even if he has not used you for healing, you will heal that day. 
But you see gifts. The gift is just stationary. It's just one. It's just, somebody is just, only that gift, only that thing. And then that's all. And then everything about that person is just that thing, only that thing. Only that. Everything is just talking about only one thing. And if you ask the person, you say, that's what I represent in the body. That's a limitation. Amen. So that's the gift of the Spirit. So the gift of the Spirit is free. Comes to everybody. It's given for everybody to, to take. It's given for everybody to understand. It's given for everybody to operate. If I get you a new smartphone and give to you, okay, let me use, let me use a, vehicle, a car. If I give to you a car, do you have the car or not? Is it your own? Yes. And you have driver's license. You know, it's only in this part of the world that you can get driver's license and you cannot drive. Because some people might be watching me what I want to say now. They say, what is he saying over there? This part of the world, you can get driver's license, you cannot drive. So, you have car, you have driver's license, but you have ability to drive. So what do you need for the car to be functional? Knowledge. Expression knowledge. So when you learn how to drive, the gift becomes what? Useful. The same thing. You get the gift of the spirit, you are not exercising it because you don't know how to. Gift of the signing of spirit. You are in a room. Eh? How many of us know this? You are in a room. You turn backwards like this. And somebody without shoe tiptoed into that room. He didn't make any noise. You know, most times you say, somebody's at my back. How did you know that? Who told you? Well, your spirit picked it. So there's something inside us that has the ability to pick what is our eye cannot see. And it doesn't use sound to get it. So you are in the room and somebody walks in, you know. Just like what um, uh, the book of Job says. A spirit passed, passed, and, my, and I have goosebumps. So that's the same way deciding of spirit works. The same way you know that somebody is walking behind you without you seeing with your eye. The same way you decide spirit. Sometimes say, it's those people that hate you, that they want shaking you, inside celebrate grace. You know, the, the, the fruit of the spirit, as I say, they're they, they mad there. Yeah. Celebrate what? <laughs> but because you have the fruit of the Spirit, you already know, you just ignore it. Jesus could know what they were thinking. Jesus could discern them. He knew, he knew, he knew what all of them were, he knew. So but it, because we have not been able to, able to exercise those giftings, that's why we have not been seeing them work. Praise the Lord. The gift of miracle. Have you ever dared the impossible? Intentionally. I remember when I received the gift, the gift of miracles, I started doing some things, some practical things. I went to dead trees and tell them to rise back. Command the tree to come back. I began to exercise my faith in so many ways because I know if I have received it, which I believe I have, the only way is to do what? Is to practice it. And the practice is action. Praise the Lord. So gifts of the Spirit are at the inception of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We do what? We, we, we walk with it. Amen? So today we want to look at the healing anointing. I'll just say that briefly and we will look how far we can go. The healing anointing. The healing anointing can be likened sometimes like a perfume. Yes. And I want to scatter this um, folktale or myth that before you can walk in healing anointing, you must fall sick. Please, cancel that thought. Can so you're telling me before I will, I will be a great evangelist, I must become a terrible sinner. 
Oh, that preacher is a terrible evangelist because ah, he was a cultist. He was the head of the social so terrorist group. He did this. Ah, he killed many Christians. That's why God is using him like that. Oh. So I mustn't be sick before I become a vessel for healing. Write it down. Because some of you are saying, ah, you're yeah, supposed to. God is using you because you felt sick. I've been walking in healing before I felt sick. I've been seeing results, dangerous results, before sickness came. So please erase that thought that you must be sick before healing anointing will come. So in talking about healing, the healing anointing, or generally, let me just talk about healing, then we'll move down to the anointing. Healing is in two ways. This is a class, actually, because now I'm talking to people that are potential ministers and people that will be ministering to other people. Healing is in two ways. One, healing can be instant and healing can be gradual. And so my text for this uh, is John, um, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me as he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to, proclaim, uh, to preach deliverance and proclaim uh, uh, liberty to the captives and to declare the favorable year of the Lord. So the healing anointing comes upon us to bring healing. It can be instant. It can be gradual. Praise the Lord. So if you are going to minister to people for healing, let them know that sometimes it will be instant and sometimes it will be what? Gradual. The person who is receiving needs to have this understanding. Praise the Lord. I, the more I mature in the healing anointing, the more I knew that the testimony shared during the service is a smallest fraction of what will happen after the meeting. Because after three, four days, some people just realize that the disease is no more. The sign is no more. The sickness is no more. Because some people's healing must be gradual. Praise the Lord. Now, healing anointing responds to faith. Write it. Healing anointing responds to faith. My second text is Acts 10, 38. How Jesus of Nazareth was anointed with Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and delivering all those who were oppressed with him, of the devil because God was with him. So, healing anointing works with faith. Can I shock you? This faith is in two folds. First, the faith of the vessel. The faith of the vessel, first. Second, the faith of the sick. And in this case, the faith of the vessel is expected to be 98 Point nine percent, and the faith of the sick should be just one percent. So, if the sick will manage to say, "Please heal me," is enough. Oh, somebody will say, "How do you say that?" You remember that boy that when Jesus went to the mountain and had encounter, mountain encounter, the mountain of transfiguration was coming down from the mountain. And they encountered argument. You know, when there is no power and result, a lot of argument will be going on. When people don't get healed, we begin to find theology to use to augment of our failure for getting them healed. You know, you know, you don't have enough faith. Like the story I shared on Facebook, somebody died and the missionary took some people. They said, "We'll go raise them from the dead." They went there, prayed, and prayed, and prayed. <laughs> Till the people who they were praying for their simply to be raised, Satan pitied them and brought them food to eat after laboring in prayers. Then one of them, who is I too know, say, you know, you people did not call us. If you had called us, <laughs> you would have raised from the dead. You people don't have faith. And the people they came to pray for their dead to rest say, sorry. <laughs> they apologize. Sorry. You see, when we don't have results, we begin to make up excuses. 
And one of the excuses many preachers give is, you don't have faith. It's very easy to say that. You say, by your faith, you are healed. Now, let me tell you, the healing anointing, if it is the healing anointing, remember, people can get healed without the anointing. Yes. People can get healed by the gift of the spirit, the gift of healing. You can operate under that gift and get them healed. But the problem now with the gift of healing is this. When the people who are under the gift of the get healed, under gift of healing, because there is no presence of the word of God, like I said initially, you operate on the gift, no word. There is tendency that the people will relapse into those sicknesses. Now, the people can get healed by faith, meaning they might not even need any preacher to come to them. They will pick the word of God the way it is, believe it for themselves, and get healed. It's possible. And a preacher can be preaching the word of God on healing, though himself has never seen anybody healed. And somebody listens to that message and believes it because God's word, the person can be healed. So the word has the capacity to heal. Amen. Like John G. Lake. John G. Lake was sick and then he got up from where he was and he heard that there was a man who was praying for the sick and laying hands somewhere far away. Do you know the issue now? That man that was praying has never healed one person. He was praying for people that were not getting healed. John G. Lake was the first person he prayed for and he got healed. Do you know why? John G. Lake believed. He believed that when hands lay on you, you'll be well. So when he met somebody that believed that when hands are laid on you, you'll be well, it happened. It doesn't necessarily mean the man had anointing for that. But now, we are talking about the healing anointing. The healing anointing is the divine equipment to make it happen. It was under healing anointing that Jesus went to the man at the pool of Bethesda and said, do you want to be made well? <laughs> and the man said, I don't have anybody to be made well. You see, the question is, do you want to be made well? Start giving excuses. It was anointing that made that man well. Amen. So the healing anointing is so powerful that it can raise the dead. When Jairus' daughter died, he said, don't worry, I'll go and heal her. They say the, the baby is dead already. Jesus is saying healing. So when we talk about faith on two sides, it is mostly the vessel. I've been there before. When somebody bring a case, I saw more. This case. <laughs> well, let's pray. If nothing happens, I don't usually say it's your faith. <laughs> because it will be self. See me now. So I don't blame you because some people will go home with the guilt. Is it my faith that is not sufficient enough? Is it my sin? Is it this? Is it that? And the person will compound to their problem. The best thing, if you don't have the anointing, don't be bragging that you have it. And if you have it at that moment, nothing happened, don't say it's the person's fault. Go and ask God what's happened. And the example. So when they came back from the mountain, they saw arguments happening. What is the problem? Uh, the man who brought the child, he said, I brought my child for your disciples to heal him and deliver him from this thing. But they cannot. Jesus turned and said, faithless generation. How long will I put up with you? Bring the child. When they brought the child, they, he asked the father, how long has this thing been happening? Well, since he was born, throw himself inside fire, throw himself inside water, wants to kill himself. Jesus addressed that thing. The boy shaked and shaked and then stopped. And everybody thought he was dead. And then he got up. Case closed. They went inside. They came. Those other nine disciples because three went to eat with him on the mountain the nine disciples that were i can imagine what they were doing i can imagine they use oil they use water i can imagine them you know shouting screaming do you know all the things they have seen jesus do nothing happened and they asked jesus why is it that we could not do this jesus answered them with one question one answer but you see most times we neglect that answer he answered and we go and say this one requires fasting and what prayer 
Jesus said, your faith. Jesus said, your faith. However, this one requires fasting and prayer. But in this case, now, now your faith will be the problem. Your faith. So if you had faith, that demon would have obeyed you. Your faith failed. That's why. And Jesus wasn't telling them that this one, uh, when you can counter something like this, go back and begin to fast and pray. Then come back and confront it. No. The fasting and prayer has been built inside our activity, our lifestyle, that we, we don't need to go and fast to cast demon. Praise the Lord. So, feet of the vessel, the vessel, the vessel. By the time they have finished with that man, they have damaged his feet. When he came, when Jesus came, do you know what he said? He said, Master, my son is troubled. He need, if you can, see his language, if you can. Jesus said, if, if I can, he said, if I, if, you, if I can, that's how the Bible puts it. Say, all things are possible to them that believe. So he, you have met the person whose faith doesn't fail. And you now, you need to believe so that this thing will work. The little of, the, he said, help me. Put, please, help my own belief. Let this thing work. And Jesus hacking to him. So if you're talking about healing anointing, it responds to faith of the vessel and the sick person. Praise the Lord. We are getting to the era where we will be walking past the airport without drama. We just walk past. All the people with high blood pressure, all the people with arthritis, all the people with sickness, you don't even need to do any drama, no show. Just pass. It will look as if wind just blow them. They will just check themselves. They are healed. And the healing anointing is not exclusive for the church. The healing anointing is for humanity. That's why in, in Captain Kuman's meeting, pagans get healed. You know, have you watched her testimonies before? I have her testimonies. Two hours clip of her testimony. Not the preaching, you know, just testimony. You will see people coming out from Sabbath, from different court groups, saying, I got healed. They didn't believe. They just attended the meeting, and they got healed. Why? The anointing, the anointing the damages yoke of sickness and serves as an advert for people who will receive the, the, the Lord. When you are now ministered to by the anointing, the first thing that should come to your mind is to tell them to come to Jesus. Amen. I think we'll start doing that in our crusade. We'll heal before we do altar call. We'll express the anointing, then we'll do altar call. Praise the Lord. Now, healing anointing works by faith that is quickened by love and compassion. You people will not listen to eat this now. People want to heal so that they can prove a point. You know, let me hear so that I'll show that I'm anointed on Friday. You will not say any healing. Let me hear so that people will know that this thing we are doing, we are not wasting our time. You will not say anything. Let me hear so that people will follow me. You will not say anything. Healing doesn't work by faith that works through envy, jealousy, competition, and all manner of things that we have out there or show. Healing works by faith that works with love and compassion. Like the other point I raised, faith of the person. I think, let me put something there too. Faith on the person. You don't believe that God can heal, use you. How much do you now want God to heal the person that came for you for prayer? So you see some people, they say, you know, God cannot use me. me I'm just, they, they claim to be humble, but they're insulting God. You don't say God cannot use you. There are cases people bring to me. I don't say God cannot use me. I say, God, it is you that will do this. And you see results. Praise the Lord. So you don't say that faith it should be 
you have faith in you being ability and being able to be used for that issue. Many people don't have it. Me, I don't know how to prophesy you. I don't know how to pray for the sick. Do you believe yourself? I believe that I, I can minister to the sick. In fact, my faith has, is transcending. Now it's transcending to the point that if you write me or maybe send me a text, even before I respond to you, just that you have taken act to do that, I have positioned my faith that once you do that, you are healed. It's a spiritual thing. I've positioned my faith that once you come close, you are healed. So by me saying that you are actually healed is an extra work to show that I believe myself more than what you are even believing your sickness for. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so I want us to clear that. So faith works by love. Love people. If you don't have enough motivation for the sick, go to the hospital. Go to oncology ward. Go to hematology ward. Go to the world where they keep diabetic people. You know, that time, light. You remember that man that was in the emergency ward with me? That, um, I think he had prostate cancer. <laughs> so they put him, we were in the emergency ward, no space. So they put him, they, they got a space for him in the, the ward where they keep diabetic people. They have cut their leg, they have cut. The man went to the ward. We were, we were waving him bye bye. You don't know, leave emergency ward. The man was rushing back, saying, "Go back, go back before they take my space in the emergency ward." <laughs> well, we asked him what happened. He said, "On his way to the ward where they will keep him, he was hearing thick smell, and he was asking the person what is smelling." He said, "That's where we are going. We are going to the diabetic section." He said, "He entered there." Some people's body getting rotted. Get, so take me back quickly before they give another person my bed. <laughs> and he came back. And he was taken. If you see the way he was taken, God. He said, thank God, though. And they didn't take my bed. <laughs> <All sweet food. laughs> I was like that. I was watching him. <laughs> and he said, he was not telling us the gist. That man was talking. He talks a lot. He was not telling us the gist that <laughs> we were there. We are enjoying <laughs> That he, he will die there before the sickness kill him because of the smell of that thing. So if you are not, if you are not having compassion for the sick, go to the hospital. There was one day, Brother Light and I, we met one woman. We were going to buy some drugs. And then that woman looks like bone. Brother Light, am I right? Bone. No skin anymore. Just skeleton. When I was passing, she just said, my son, help me. Not money. I, we should carry her. And guy keep on the bed. It was Brother Light that carried her woman with a terrible smell. She had, I don't know the, the cancer she had. And then we saw one young lady who had who had breast cancer. And then because of the treatment, she's looking old. Her husband is looking young, obviously. And then brain tumor. Then the brain tumor damaged the nerves that connect the eye. So she is blind with brain tumor and breast cancer. If you don't have compassion, go and get it. It's in the hospital. It's free. Go there, collect some compassion, and come back home and start praying. Because some of you, you are so hard. You say, hey, you don't have faith. You don't understand what they are talking about. Hey, believe now. No. Go and take holiday in the hospital. Telling people about Christ. Giving them tract and preaching to them. By the time you saw their cases, one day, okay, we saw a woman's leg like bucket. Dripping blood, and I don't know what's that. I was complaining I had cancer. By the time I entered the hospital, I used to thank God about my own. Say, thank God my own is not like this. Terrible. So, faith works with love and compassion. If you're talking about healing anointing, though, faith with love and what? Compassion. Now, when you're talking about healing anointing, the healing anointing comes to equip you to handle our sicknesses. But one thing you must note is that it will give you a mastery of one section. Yes. It will give you a mastery of one section 
So people have healing anointing that handles bones. So people have healing anointing that handles deaf people, dumb people. So people have healing anointing that handles kidney issues, you know. So people have healing anointing that handles arthritis, diabetes, and all manner of things. So this healing anointing is given to everybody, and each of us have an area where that anointing has greater strength. Praise the Lord. When people come to me for prayer for five brother, I send them to Brother Light. The Brother Light, over the time, I've discovered that, oh, he has more results there. You pray for five brother people, they get well. If I pray for them, they don't get well. It doesn't mean I'm not anointed. Amen? <laughs> After all, the man at the beautiful gate, Jesus passed there for three years. Did he heal him? Then Peter healed him. Does he mean Peter is higher than Jesus? The workings of the anointed. So the anointing we we will be fashioned, given to each one of us, which we have, and each one of us will have areas. When you discover the area where your anointing has strength, ah, yeah, 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 you will be flying. Amen. Amen. A popular man of God in this Abuja, if he sees you wearing neck braces or hood, he'll collect it. People will be jumping. Hey. I was just like, that's the major area where his strength is. Praise the Lord. Just like people having arthritis. There was one meeting we went to. A woman was, first of all, the miracle happened at home. I, God told me, he has given me the grace of arthritis. So my friend invited me somewhere in Abuja. The woman uses work aid. They use leg braces and all that. After talking to the woman, I told her, get up and walk. And this old woman, having faith, told her children, remove these braces, which is dangerous to do. Remove it, throw away her, this thing, and walked. Still walking to today. One week later, I was in a church, a cathedral, and I was ministering, and a woman had her walker. And she was having arthritis, and I told her, get up. That woman got up and walked threw away those walking stick and began to walk. And it became easier and easier if it's arthritis. There are, so if we want to minister, we start from those places where we do what? Where we have discovered our grace. And you will not discover until you start praying for people. Eh? The headache, no work. You pray for bleed, nose bleeding. You pray for this, you pray for this, you pray for this. Keep praying! You will discover that place where your own strength is. And when you come to the public to minister, minister from the first place where you have your strength. That's why some apostles in Nigeria here, they'll start with the deaf. Some will start with the dumb. Some will say, where are the people with walker? So, some will say, where are the blind? Start with your place of strength. When your place of strength manifests under the anointing, what the anointing does is that the anointing will expand like expand like balloon and then accommodate other things that can be touched and many people will be healed. Healing anointing. So this healing anointing most times operates if you are the feelers. The feelers are the people who perceive the, the, the anointing. The feelers. Some people are not the feelers, and they say, I don't know why me, I don't feel anything. Maybe you are not, a, you are not part of the feelers. So the feelers, they feel the anointing. They, if the anointing is in operation, they feel it. Some people don't. Amen. Went to a meeting where one man of God was ministering. One fellow, he refused to fall. He didn't even pity the man of God to say, let me just fall to pity. He refused to fall. And I was watching. So I don't expect everybody to fall. Amen. Amen. Like me, I'm not the filler. But I can perceive the anointing sometimes. If the anointing, if I can perceive it to, to some level in my body, that, that means it should, some people should be rolling uncontrollably on the floor. So this anointing is, is given to us and you can perceive it. What the, anointing, what the anointing does primarily, it gives you consciousness. 
consciousness. Consciousness that I can handle this thing. Consciousness that Christ can handle this thing. It gives you consciousness. So if you don't have that consciousness, that means there is something wrong. You are supposed to have the consciousness. I can minister healing to this person. Praise the Lord. Now, I want us to spot this. Healing is a gift as well. It's a gift. But we're not talking about the healing word, anointing. Most of the times, you praise through your hand. Your hand begins to get hot. Your hand begins to get warm. Sometimes it might not operate through your hand. It might operate with a deep persuasion that God wants to heal. And all those times I put on Facebook, I say, if you want to be healed, go to my inbox and say, Jesus Christ. People go there and get healed. It's a deep persuasion. Something deep inside your spirit. And some people, they will just lock up themselves with religion. Lock up themselves. And the worst thing to do is to teach religious people. Because the more you are teaching them, the more they will be quoting that thing that has not been working for ages. You say, but they taught us like this. What they taught you, is it working? No. Throw it away. They say, no, we'll keep it. That is what our fathers believe. We have nobody. So if you are going to work in the healing anointing, the anointing will come in different ways. Praise the Lord. So the healing anointing will come. Sometimes your feet will burn, your hand will burn. Know this, know this clearly. This healing anointing is the anointing that raises the dead. That time we went to, um, where is that place? Delta State. Only in Delta. And I was telling them how the healing anointing of my life, uh, by faith, fixed my smartphone that was damaged. And they were looking at me like this. They were looking at me. And because it was Orthodox Church, they would look at you more. They were looking at you. Say, what's it with this? Say, feed the lie now. That, that lie don't enter this thing. I know that's the thing. Eh? They were very vocal with their, their, their thoughts. Oh, they're not afraid of any man. So they were looking at me. We are already gone. We have finished the meeting and went. One woman, because when we talk about anointing, anointing defends itself. All these things that we go on social media, we are defending the anointed is a waste of time. Leave it. Anointing will defend the owner who is carrying it. He doesn't need help. Don't touch our anointed. Don't touch anointed. Don't, don't those things are rubbish.